Okay, I want to say a few words about your exam. And to begin, I just want to give you a sense of the format of the exam. Uh, what follows right here is a sample exam that I gave to a completely different class. It was a history of Mexico, set up similarly to your history of Brazil. Um, but this is the format of what your exam would look like, but of course with different information, different material. You can see there's two parts. The first part up here are the IDs. Uh, the IDs are worth 32 points total. Uh, that is to say, you have nine IDs to choose from, and you need to choose four of the nine. Uh, each one of those four being worth eight points, eight times four is 32. So you can see it here. Again, this was a history of Mexico course, so none of these IDs would look similar. It will look familiar to you in this course. Uh, your IDs, uh, for their part, will be drawn from the review sheet. Uh, that I mentioned in my email that's posted on the course website that I included as an attachment in the email that I sent out. And I'll go to that review sheet in a, in a moment and speak more about that. Uh, the second portion of the exam, you can see here is an essay portion. It says, do one of the following. You'll get your choice of two essay questions and uh, you need to choose one of the two and uh, give me a good solid essay. Generally two and a half to three pages is what students, a good essay typically includes in terms of length. Um, you can see this is worth 68 points, approximately two thirds of the exam. And you can see the instructions indicate write a well-structured essay using specific evidence and examples drawn from both lectures and readings in response to one of the following questions. And then there'll be two broad uh, questions ask you for big picture sort of information um, and then you want to respond uh, providing a you know big picture view of things but then using evidence from specific lectures detailed evidence uh, to back up what you want to argue um, so anyway that gives you a sense in terms of of the format of it in terms of uh, just a couple of other things very quickly in all of this as I said your choice of the nine IDs will be drawn from the midterm study guide. And here I've blown up an example of the midterm study guide. You can see there are a lot of terms here. Nine of these terms uh, will end up on the exam. And then you'll ultimately choose four of the nine in your response. A uh, big question in all of this is how do you deal with so many terms? Well, I'd encourage you, among other things, to start now. We're a week away from the exam. These IDs are the building blocks, both for the ID section, but ultimately the details that you could draw upon in an essay. And so start now. There's a lot of material to learn, but start now. You've got a week. Secondly, group these terms together. So for example, if you look here, you'll see that the terms basically go in the order of any given lecture. So our first day in class, we dealt with these terms, Feitoria, Madeira, Vasco da Gama, Goa. The next class took us right down essentially uh, through here and, uh, and on and on. Group them together. Uh, any given ID is going to have different details, but the big picture in terms of the ID is going to be very similar to the terms next to it. And so even though you've got, you know, I don't know, 90 or 100 of these terms, the reality is, is that they come from 13, 14, 15 lectures and discussions. So you're dealing with much less here uh, in, in terms of that. So don't let it overwhelm you. Think of what is the big picture in terms of any given, any given lecture. Uh, moving on from that, I just want to give you a sense of what a good ID looks like. And for that, I actually want to use one of the terms from today's lecture. This is an actual example from an exam of how a student responded to the ID Chiridenshis. And here, this is an excellent example. You can see I've written it's historically accurate, it's comprehensive, it's detailed, it's specific. The student gets a full eight points for this. Uh, just to read over it quickly, they write, Chiridenshis was a Portuguese dentist and dragoon corporal who led the Inconfidencia Minera, which involved in part of the Minas Gerais region of Brazil in 1788. This rebellion, though it admittedly never got off the ground, was planned before the French Revolution and was instead modeled after the American Revolution. He supported a political, not social, revolution with the primary concern being taxation charges. He wanted to free natural-born slaves but continue African slavery. The revolt was put down in March of 1789 and all the rebels were sent to prison in Angola, except Chiridenshis. 
He was hung and then quartered in 1792 as an example to others considering a rebellion. Again, it's, it, it, it's accurate, it's comprehensive, it's detailed. You want to write essentially a good, solid paragraph for any given ID. And this was a very, very good example. Now, here's another example. It was also a good example. It's fairly comprehensive and specific. It does leave out a key detail, or rather it gets it wrong. It doesn't get the location right. So they would have gotten six or seven points instead of the full eight points. You can see here, Chiridenshi's, the tooth puller, was an uneducated dentist who led a revolt in Bahia in Salvador in the 1780s. Well, they just got the location wrong. His revolt was unsuccessful and the leaders were rounded up, but only Chiridenshi's was killed. In fact, he was drawn and quartered. Chiridanchis, like Miguel Giadalgo, became a symbol of the spirit of independence for his country and is yet another example of people in Latin America identifying themselves more as Americans, Brazilian, Mexican, etc., rather than European. Again, this is a good example. They just messed up the location. Uh, this, on the other hand, is a poor example. It says Chiridanchis is the nickname, meaning tooth puller or dentist. Well, that's literally correct. He was known as one of the meanest people in all of Spain in the late 1500. He led a revolt which never really had any impact. It ended really before it started. He did not like taxes or local powers. Who does? Every person was executed in the revolt. However, Chiridenchis was exiled to Angola. He was a warning for other people who were believing to lead a revolt. Well, you can see they try to be comprehensive, but many of the details are vague and are incorrect. Uh, though they do, again, get the meaning of the name correct. You get the sense that the student recognizes the name, they just can't put it really in any sort of accurate kind of context. And then finally, another very poor example, much poorer than that one, is here where you have a student who's historically in inaccurate, it's not comprehensive, it's not detailed, though again, they get the meaning of the name correct. They might get one point for this. Literally, the dentist, this was the nickname for a Brazilian aristocrat. So that is to give you a sense, as it were, of what my expectations are on the IDs. We'll talk more about the essays in the review session on Tuesday. We'll also talk about the essays when we move forward, uh, ideally, class on Friday for a little bit as part of our, our reading that we'll do on that day. But one other comment in terms of keeping track of all of this, uh, the essay did ask you, to draw, you can see, upon both lectures and reading. Uh, to facilitate that, what I will provide uh, in terms of drawing here, as it says, upon both lectures and reading, is a list of all of the readings that we've done uh, to date over the course of the semester so that when you're actually writing your essay, you can, uh, you're not trying to pluck that out of the air, as it were, but you can say, oh, I remember we read somebody that dealt with that. You can look down the list, you can recognize the name, and then you can include uh, you know, a reference to the reading and what it taught, what it showed uh, as you're making an argument in your essay. So anyway, again, here you've got an example of what the exam would look like in terms of format. In terms of the IDs, you want to do the who, the what, the where, the when, and then the most important thing, the thing you're going to really spend time crafting on the ID is, is you know, the larger significance. How does any given term fit into the larger arguments of any given lecture?